Hello and welcome to Around the Clock. I'm your host, Yolanda Greaves. Today I am speaking with Kim Sternick, the General Manager of the Warren Conference Center. Kim, welcome to Around the Clock. Well, thank you very much. What a pleasure to be here. So, Kim, we are here in the House, the White House on the Warren Conference Center, uh, the house of originally Henry Warren. This is Henry Warren's home. Uh, this is the Warren House. Okay. appropriately named for Henry, um, which most of Ashland has, is familiar with Henry Warren and the clocks. Um, we're sitting in the Maple Room, which is right outside of Maple Row, which uh, is a, a row of trees that were planted for an acquaintance of, his, of Henry's who was getting married here and oh, wow. went down there. Above us is our Telecron Room, mm -hmm. appropriately named for the Telecron Clock. And we have the clock lounge, and we have a lot of memorabilia throughout the entire property uh, and its history around uh, its invention. It's coming to fruition when it's purchased its um, endowment to Northeastern University, mm -hmm. where Northeastern operated it for many, many years. Uh, and then, as of late, owned by now Framingham State University. So, Kim, before we get into more about uh the Warren Center and why we're here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you live? I live in Ashland. Nice. I have the best commute in the world. <laughs> yeah, about six minutes door to door. Okay. <laughs> so I've lived in Ashland for uh, since about 14 years mm -hmm. and I uh, had an opportunity to make Ashland my home and my work. So nice. I never leave Ashland That's now. a great commute. <laughs> I used to work in Boston and used to go do it two and three times a day when my kids were little. Now I'm uh, going to Target's really like a day trip. <laughs> that other me. side of yeah, premium. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, and how long have you been working here at the Warren Conference Center? So I've been all, almost in November, it'll be 10 years that I've been here. Um, and it's just an amazing place and I'm so fortunate to have have the um, opportunity to come here every day and work. General manager, what does that mean? I do everything. Um, <laughs> we, you know, through the years it's evolved, it's changed. I've gotten to work with uh, many different uh, people um, through my management team, through different events. We plan events. We do all kinds of things. Uh, we're, we, up until COVID, we did about 75% of our business was meetings, conferences, mm -hmm. and outings. We always did weddings. Um, yep. That shifted a little bit in the last year. Mm -hmm. Now we're about 90% social business and about 10% okay. corporate business. So our whole business model is changing a bit. Um, and we're very excited to uh, see what the hospitality industry brings forward, what the new what the new norm is going to be in the next years. Yeah, how, how was it for through COVID for, did you c close down at all? Or? We were fortunate enough that when COVID first came, we were working with a research project with Boston Children's Hospital. We were doing a food study where we had, uh, through Framingham State, had connected us, mm -hmm. and we had in residence 30-some-odd uh, people who were oh, wow. here. So we were able to continue that. Mm -hmm. uh, they were isolated. They had never left the facility, so we were able to maintain that. That oh, concluded good. in May, mm -hmm. um, and then we were closed intermittently, um, but we were able to do some events throughout all of COVID following yes. all of the guidelines that were in place. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate that we have a lot of outdoor space and we're able to yeah. configure some things in ways that we were able to be entirely outdoors for just about all we did. So you did mention that it was originally owned by Northeastern. Mm -hmm. They created a lot of the spaces here. Yes. Framingham State now owns it. As people drive by, we're seeing a little bit of changes happening. Yes. Parking, different yes. things. What are what are those changes and what's going on so here? So we, uh, there was a big old barn here. Yes. Uh, that's now owned, was owned by, by the, the town, town of yeah. Ashland. Um, and the barn is gone. The silo stays. So we're very excited about what's going to happen with that mm -hmm. um, and how we'll be able to continue to partner with the town yep. for use of the replica or whatever it ends up being. Yep. Um, we're also in the process of introducing um, a new concept um, with Framingham State University and the town of Ashland. We're creating a university community club. Okay. Um, which will allow for people to have access to more direct access to the state park. Mm -hmm. um, for many years, uh, the town has always used the, the parking and next to the tennis courts. And when COVID came, we had to close that. Yep. We've not reopened that as we're getting ready to launch the community club. So the community club um, we will be increasing some parking over there. Um, it will be a paid membership for a, an annual membership, mm -hmm. and that will allow 
for close parking to access the trails. It will yep. also allow to schedule and utilize the tennis courts as well as the pickleball courts. And we're almost at 100% completion of a nine-hole disc golf course, which is Fine. going on through um, through through the woods area. It's fairly oh, quite interesting. interesting. Yeah, it's, be it's really beautiful. Because I was going to ask, you said a disc golf course. I'm like, what we don't that? have that many field space. Right. So you're doing it through it's the woods. It's all through the woods. One of our associates um, is an avid disc golfer. Okay. And has brought, uh, he does a lot of tournaments in the area and has educated us as to the benefits of it. And he's put, it's a labor of love for him and he's designed the whole course and worked through it and comes in and on a volunteer basis and has put together a, a fabulous little course. Wow. So it'll be nine holes. And uh, we're very excited. So with membership, you'll be able to sign up for tea times. Uh, I think that's what they call them. Uh, the start times. <laughs> it's golf. It, Maybe it's that's golf. the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also be offering a, a social programming. So a whole calendar of programming every month, including fitness courses, classes. Um, we really did a lot of research to see what people would be interested in. And mm -hmm. we'll be open to ideas and thoughts yeah. and trying to make it something that's really a, a huge resource to the community of both Framingham State University and the town of Ashland. Uh, I believe when we have all kinds of committees going on uh, to make sure that we're doing this right. And we're, we're hoping to officially open for September 1st with nice. maybe a softer opening and membership uh, beginning in August. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited. Yeah. Good. So for people who are not familiar, how large is the space? Is so the, the is property the has uh, 67 acres, okay. which it is adjacent to the state park. Mm -hmm. And we're working right now with the DCR, um, who owns a state park, to do, we're doing a rehab of some of the beach area that's a part of the property oh, nice. or part of the park. Um, we've had a lot of erosion and things like that. Yeah. So we've partnered with Framingham State with the DCR to improve some of the trails uh, down by the waterfront area. Okay. And then we're intending to make uh, clear, not clear trails, but make them a little more user friendly mm -hmm. on the uh, Framingham State's property okay. as, as they access into the um, state park. Now, I know one of the things that people enjoy doing is doing a full loop sure. around the reservoir. Will yeah. that access still be available? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. So the, the thing that will be different is, is the parking. So okay. um, for years, the residents from all over the place have come and right. parked there. Um, and enjoyed a enjoyed quote, unquote, dog park, a dog which we park. know it's not. Yeah, we know it's not a dog <laughs> park. Um, so, <laughs> so now it'll be... Um, actually permitted and then you'll be allowed to come here it'll be okay. more parking um, right. with different access so we're really excited about that nice nice i think we may have to come back when the when the disc golf club yes the disc we're golf very course excited is open about and, uh, that yeah go take a look i've never played we're also disc golf. looking at the ability to um to rent and to have watercraft go out we're looking at uh, stand-up paddle boards and oh fun you know uh, some canoes and kayaks so we're excited about some opportunities that we have that's great so when will marketing or if people watch this and they're interested in the university uh, community club where could they reach out to so for more info we're stay stay tuned um, okay we have some information that's on framingham state's website yep. and we are sort of going through all the frequently asked questions before okay. we put links onto our website okay. and the, the membership portal we're hoping to have open for the first or second week of August. Um, okay. And we're super excited. Okay, well, well, once we know that that's up, we'll remind yep. people. Uh, Kim, so there's a question I ask people who have never been on Around the Clock. Okay. It's fairly easy. Is there something about you, Kim Sternick, that not many people may know Ooh. that you'd be willing to share with our viewers? Ooh. Uh, something about me. Um, let's see. Something in your past that you've accomplished that not many people may know about or... I had the pleasure and the opportunity to cater a clam bake in Los Angeles, California for the cast and crew of West Wing. Oh my goodness. And got to meet and hang out and sit in on a filming of all that. I'm dating myself. That's an old show no, now. No, but, but that's for, way for cool. someone. I'm dating myself because that I love that show. Oh wow, that was really cool. Very yeah. cool. <laughs> Very cool. Who was your? Who was the favorite person to meet? Bradley Whitford. Really? Who I now see on The Handmaid's Tale, which is yes. a, a wonderful series. Yes. Bradley Whitford was wonderful. George Clooney. I've had, I've had a, an opportunity to, to hobnob with some. Um, very famous people in my wow. in my career. 
Well, very good. On the food service side. On the food service. Not, not you. <laughs> Well, Kim, thank you so much thank for having you. us here at the Warren Conference a Center. Uh, we look forward to hearing more and seeing when the University oh, Community we're so Club excited. opens. Yep. And uh, like I said, we'll have to come back and try out that disc golf. Yes, very exciting. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. And that wraps up this interview. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Yolanda Greaves.